This is AutoLine Daily, the show for those who want to know what's going on in the automotive industry. You know, even though the diesel engine's been around for over 130 years, they're still finding out ways to make it more efficient. Bosch and the Chinese diesel manufacturer, Weichai, worked together to boost the thermal efficiency of diesels for heavy trucks from 46% on up to 50%. That may not sound like a lot, but boosting the thermal efficiency by four percentage points is a significant improvement. Neither company released many details, but it seems to center on the fuel injection system, which runs at 2,500 bar. That's over 36,000 PSI. High pressure provides finer atomization of the fuel, which then burns cleaner and more completely. The Chinese EV company Candy is going to sell cheap little electric cars in the U.S., starting in Texas. And it just got its EPA numbers for the two models that it's selling. The bigger K23 can go 111 miles with its 41.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. It gets a combined 90 MPGE rating. The smaller K27 only goes 59 miles and gets a 114 MPGE rating. So how cheap are these cars? Well, the K23 starts at just under 20 grand, but that includes the $7,500 federal EV tax credit. The K27 starts at just under 10 grand. And we cannot wait to see the kind of crash rating that these cars get. They go on sale later this year. We ran across an interesting report that lists the top 10 car companies in China by their market capitalization. And the results are surprising because the largest car companies are not necessarily at the top of the list. Number one is BYD, which is worth $35 billion. Next up is the Shanghai Automotive Industry Corporation, or SAIC. It's valued at $32.7 billion. NIO comes in at $24 billion. Geely is worth 20, Great Wall is at 18.8, Xpeng at 16.5, Guangzhou or GAC at 16 billion, Li Auto at 15, the first Auto Works or FAW at 10, and Chang'an is rated at 8.6 billion dollars. Speaking of Geely, when Li Shufu, the founder of Geely, bought Volvo, he said he wanted Chinese consumers to be reminded of Scandinavia when they breathe the air inside of their cars. So Volvo is putting the equivalent of a face mask on its cars. The V90, the XC90, and the 60 series models get cabin filters that eliminate 95% of particulate matter down to 2.5 microns. In China, customers can also use a display to compare the air quality inside their car to the air quality on the outside. You know, this is a great marketing feature. In China, consumers are far more aware of the daily air quality ratings due to the high levels of pollution in the country. And breathing clean air inside of a car is a real selling point. Baidu is one of China's leading tech companies, and it really wants to get into autonomous taxis. It showed off its AV capabilities this week, including an autonomous car driving around the streets of Beijing. It also demonstrated a remote control station where a human being can remotely take command of an autonomous car if it encounters a situation it cannot handle. And all of that communication is handled via a 5G connection. Robin Lee, the billionaire entrepreneur who co-founded the company, predicts that autonomous cars will really scale up in five years. He says they'll reduce traffic congestion by 15 to 30 percent. And he says China's top-tier cities will no longer have to restrict new car sales. In 10 years, he says, the technology will be there to eliminate traffic congestion altogether. He says autonomous vehicles could boost China's GDP growth by 4.8%, and Robin Lee predicts the economy will really take off. 
We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. You might remember a story that we ran about a Toyota bus jam-packed full of Honda generators. It's all about delivering power to areas that have been hit by storms or fires or earthquakes. Well, now Toyota's partnering with a company called Denyo to develop a fuel cell power supply truck. Based on a Toyota medium duty truck, it's equipped with 27 tanks that hold about 65 kilos of hydrogen. That's enough to generate 612 kilowatt hours of power and 450 liters of water. Not only could a vehicle like that be used in any kind of disaster, Toyota says it'd be great for outdoor events like concerts. And in other hydrogen news, Hyundai is now exporting its fuel cells to Europe. And while it's the same system used in the Nexo, these fuel cells will be used for stationary power supply. They'll be used in buildings to generate electricity at peak times and as mobile hydrogen generators. By making fuel cells for non-automotive applications, Hyundai is going to get more manufacturing scale and that's going to drive down the cost of the fuel cells that go in its cars and trucks. You know, we had a C8 Corvette in the Auto Line garage this week. And coming up next, I have something to say about it. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. There is so much heritage and history to the Corvette, which is why I've always respected the car. But I never felt the urge to own one myself until the C8 came out. I gotta tell you, I would love to own this thing. It's probably the finest machine I've ever driven in my life. There's been a lot reported on, a lot written about this car, all the engineering and the styling and things like that. I'm not gonna get into that right now. I just wanna point out a few things that really stand out in my mind. Come here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. What I wanna show you here is some of the detail work that went into the design of the car, the craftsmanship, if you will. For example, this high line that's on the rear fender that goes into the door. They got the peak of this line to match up perfectly from one to the other. Now you gotta imagine how they worked with the clay to get this in the studio, but even more importantly from a craftsmanship standpoint, how they got the molds for these to match up exactly. We see the same thing happening in the scalloping that's happening here. There's this very fine line, almost imperceptible until you get up and look at it. Another one right up here and they just sort of fade into nothing. It's hard to find out where they start, where they end. There's an extremely subtle one back here that really shows off the craftsmanship that goes into the car. Again, Corvette's not the only one that does it, but it shows how they really sweated the details as they developed this car. And then there's a few things I'd like to show you on the inside as well. So the first thing about this car is the seating position is absolutely perfect, absolutely perfect. The dead pedal and the gas pedal are exactly in the same plane and at the same angle. I just feel anchored in place here. And I just love the way that the whole cockpit wraps around me. One thing that's really interesting is this, this bar here, this has all the climate controls. Then you've got the gear shift lever and you've got this really nice, almost key fob-like kind of addition to the console, which is where you control the different settings for how the car will drive. Track mode, touring mode, weather mode, that sort of thing. But the other thing that I really like about this car is, is it's so high-tech. They've, they've added so many electronics to take away buttons and knobs and all that sort of thing. But there's two that really stood out for me there's a little rotary knob for the volume of the sound system. Rotary knob. Boy, that was invented probably 100 years ago and nobody's improved on it since. And there's another rotary knob down here that, contra that controls the brightness or the dimness of the instrument panel. Again, very high tech, but what I love is how Corvette settled on 
very simple solutions that get right to the heart of the matter of what you want to do very simply. No razzmatazz, no super technology way of doing it, rotary knobs. And that's what I wanted to point out here. The craftsmanship in this car is unbelievable, especially for a Corvette, and that's why I really would like to end up owning this car. Man, it's true, that C8 is the finest machine I have ever driven in my life. Hey, before we go, I want to remind you to join us next Wednesday for a special live one-hour post-mortem of Tesla's Battery Day. We're bringing in two of the foremost experts in the world in EVs to help us understand what Tesla announced. Bob Gallion and Sandy Monroe will be on the show sharing their knowledge. And if you've got questions that you'd like to ask Sandy and Bob, send an email to viewermail at autoline.tv or tweet us at autoline. And that wraps up today's show. Have a great weekend and we will be right back here again on Monday. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.